been uh, victimized, and, and they really are a gift from God. And from the very uh, beginning, when we started Crosstown, Laura Reeves has been there. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, well, it's even hard for me to talk about it. So I'm just going to invite you up to share with us a yeah, little bit about Victor Bridges and Crosstown. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 she usually stands with me in court. Yeah. <laughs> Stand up with her. <laughs> oh, you got to get on the camera. Okay. First of all, I apologize. I'm late. Yesterday I had a very bad migraine and I took two Tylenol PM last night. So wow. I woke up this morning. I wasn't like focused. So thank God for Joyce. <laughs> so I had a, my plan to come. So I appreciate that. Um, you want to start? No. Uh, okay. Laura's been, uh, my daughter was killed in 99. And that's when I met her. And we've been really close since it's, if I have a problem, you know, they're very busy down there, I understand, in shorthand. I just call her because she gets right on it, takes care of it right then. And oh, she's always done that all these years, what, 25 years now. Yeah. So she's my favorite uh, by far <laughs> out of all of them. And uh, she's been there for us. Whenever we needed her, she's always came and been there for us. Thank you. So I've been doing my job about 27 years. Um, again, I met Joyce on the beginning. Um, two, two moms came into the office, met because of Casey, and I just, it really made me understand what my job was about and to help reach out. Uh, and I could just see them in pain, especially Casey, because I met her first. She's mean. She was mean um, to a coworker, and I was like, or, hey, that's, yeah, I listened to her for a while, and then I kind of butted in, but nicely. and. So we have built a relationship since then with the church was very needed, thank God for Chaplain White, because I knew that they needed something else. I knew what I could do to get them through the court system, but I didn't know what the next step would be. So with us meeting, and I said, hey, you guys need to start a group, or you need yeah. a meeting, we need to go on Oprah, we need to do something. <laughs> That's what Oprah used to be, Monday through Friday. <laughs> and I just, they had so much to say, somebody had to hear it. And again, I don't know how they feel, but I just, I would want to give respect and give respect back, God forbid. Um, I've met these nice families. They've been through so much. Some have resolution, some do not. We work with all victims of violent crime, and we do try to help. Um, even this week, we had a turnover this past year of about nine advocates for many reasons. Um, but I started an academy that we're doing next week, Tuesday through Friday, and I have three moms coming, and Joyce is one of them. And what we're going to do is, we have so many fresh out of college that uh, don't have this type of experience. And so I want them to hear from the beginning to the end, good and bad. It doesn't have to be like, oh, who's your best advocate? That's not what it's about. It's about, I want to know what your feelings were from the beginning with law enforcement, with us, with the court system, um, where you're at now on it, that type of thing. Because I think that's so important for them to learn to do this kind of a job. Because it's, this job is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because you can't leave it at home. Even when we used to be 24 hours with our old boss, Diane, I'd be out all night on homicides. And I was a single mom at that time and many other crimes. I remember going home in the morning to pick my son up from my mom's house and get him to school. Oh, Mom, how was work? Of course, I can't tell him what happened all night, you know. Because I had one night that was really horrible, and I guess he could feel it or sense it. And um, he's, oh, you know, what happened? Oh. You know, I helped some kids tonight. Oh, we've got to get you ready for school and on. And then I got him to school. I came home and I took a, a shower and just cried because I'm human too. I remember that night going from like a hit and run on a teenager when the skateboard uh, skating place used to be over there on Hammer Lane, Hammer Skate. And they closed up early and all the parents weren't there. And these kids ran across and someone got hit. Never found who that person was. He lived, but he has major injuries also had two different homicides that night, Diane and I broke up and went to. So I can't go home and say, gosh, this is what happened to me tonight. You know what I mean? Obviously age appropriate and there's many different reasons why I could not tell him, but we still keep it in our mind. We still have to process it in some way. I was lucky growing up, my son, because I grew up with him it seems like, <laughs> he did swimming and water polo. So when I wasn't working, we were out doing those activities and it really made a big difference to keep me, um, healthier, if lack of a better term, got fresh air, got outside, because our job is very hard. We get called out to the crime scene from any law enforcement in our county on any type of violent crime. It could be bank robbery, sexual assault, 
just anything. Um, the bank robberies are hard because uh, some they're daytime, but they get taken over. You know, some I the worst the last one I had was on Benjamin Hole, and they ran in, got up on the counter with shotguns. And I remember we were there to debrief the staff and the customers. And what I remember about that, that one of the tellers was like eight months pregnant, and that was her third robbery that year. And so that was very hard. So we chatted for a couple hours, and then we did some follow-up. Um, obviously, she didn't come back to work till after she had the baby, like six months later. But after the day, she just couldn't come back. You know, I would be, I don't know if I could either. But I listen to people, and we, I try to teach the people in our office to listen, not just oh, hi, how you doing, kind of listen, yeah. but like listen, listen to their mm -hmm. thoughts and their feelings and mm -hmm. what they're going through and can we help with something or can we just be there just to be support. And then we were lucky enough along the way, um, Chaplain White runs this beautiful church and he's let them have their meetings here for the support group. Huge. Who else is going to do that? Um, he knows because he's experienced same similar things and even him as a chaplain um, it's huge in our, in our county, especially in Stockton, because we're down so darn many officers. So I could say if there's anyone that could pass a background that wants to be an officer, they are training people to be an officer, mm -hmm. and we're down quite a bit. And mm -hmm. um, We all need to help as a group, mm -hmm. um, because we're from this community, to help build it up and make it better. Um, Joyce has always been there. I try to come a couple meetings every year if I can. Yeah, she does. Because um, we do work days and nights, and we rotate. Sometimes I'm physically dead meat by the end of the week that I just have to shut down for the weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just do a little gardening in the backyard, mm -hmm. run a few errands, and then just be in usually. Mm -hmm. So um, it takes all of us to be a group. Or what's that phrase? It takes a village. Yeah. We are all the village. We all have to help each other out yeah. and be there for each other and talk to each other. If you're having a bad day, give us a call. If you have a question you're not sure about because you happen to be a victim of a crime or a friend needs help, yeah. you can always call me. Um, I'll be glad to answer or get you the person that we can get some answers from, hopefully. There's a lot of unsolved crimes, so we need to get attention out to that also. And I just believe this church is the place for um, everybody to come to that needs some support and some help, including mm -hmm. me, to help process stuff. Because I'm human just like you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. It's, it's huge. You, it's huge. Um, we have different management at our head DA's office is Ron Freitas. Uh, some people like him, some don't. I love him. Yeah, I remember yeah. when we first started the support I group, remember. he was very um, into it, backed us up, uh, just helped get it going <laughs> with us because he believed in that too. So that's huge. And now he's the head DA, so it really does make a big difference. Um, he's into prosecuting, which is excellent. Um, but we do need help. So if you are willing to help and step up, there's a lot of open jobs within the city or just around the city or just just help us support here at the church and for Joyce and her group. Very mm -hmm. important. Very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I was running late. I apologize. Thank God for Joyce for calling. We've got to help each other out, for God's sake. Keep <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me on my toes. Yeah. She knows I'm an early bird. I used to put early to everything. Yeah. So thank God you called me. I'm like, oh my gosh. Don't get those. Okay, in 30 minutes, I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate being asked to come, and this is a very good place to come. Mm. And um, I need to probably come here a little, a little more often. Mm. Thank you. Welcome anytime. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've also heard stories about when Joyce first went to victim witness at, when her daughter was killed. They they were scared because she had these steel worker boots they could hear her coming down the hallway. <laughs> and uh, and she was hurt, so she was angry. And, and, and they uh, scattered. They, <laughs> yeah, a lot of them went scattered. But, uh, but that, that has opened up a tremendous opportunity for us to really minister to thousands of people yeah. mm -hmm. as a church. And mm -hmm. so we just appreciate uh, Victim Witness being there for us and us yeah. being able to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it, it's been just tremendous for us. 